Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I shall be giving you an easy guide to everything you need to know about water for brewing. Brewing water treatment is often a subject that blinds a lot of people with science. It's fair to say that the chemistry behind water is a somewhat complex topic. Luckily for all of us the treatment of water for brewing can actually be very simple when presented and explained in the right way. In this guide, I shall target making this process as easy to understand as possible. I will be covering all you need to know to change your water's pH and also its chemistry to match well-known water profiles in a no-fuss and easy to understand way. It should not surprise anyone to be told that the main component of any beer is actually water. Changing your water's profile can have very, very good effects on certain styles of beer, especially when coupled with good brewing techniques and a stable fermentation schedule. Many of my previous videos have focused on good brewing techniques and I've also addressed good practices for fermentation in one of my recent videos, so it seemed only reasonable that we now look at water. So here we are. If your tap water is good enough to drink, then quite frankly it's good enough to brew with. But, if you are suffering very nasty tap water that you cannot drink, then your water is simply not suitable for beer brewing in its current state. In the latter state, I would suggest that you either invest in a water filtration system, or simply buy mineral water in your local supermarket. OK, so now we've established what type of water can be used for brewing, let's get on with making it even better. The first thing to do is to get a water report from your supplier. This will show the chemical balance of your water. Traditionally, the local water profile will dictate the type of beer a brewery could actually successfully produce. But due to advances within modern chemistry, your water's chemistry can be changed at home with the help of certain chemicals. Your local water report will give us all of the data that we need so that we know exactly what to change. The very first thing to address are disinfectants in your water, like chlorine. Removing these is actually very simple. And you have a choice. You can either pre-filter your water or use Camden tablets at the rate of half a tablet per 25 litres of water. 25 litres equates to 6.6 .6 US liquid gallons. The next step is actually adjusting the pH of your mash water. Please note that the pH of your bare water is irrelevant. We are only interested in the pH of your water once you have added your grains. This is a case of the alkalinity of your water. This is one thing about your water that can vary often, sometimes on a week-to-week -week basis, so it is essential to start afresh on each new brew when it comes to pH adjustment. The ideal pH value for brewing is 5.2. So you can see that in most waters we're really going to need to do some form of adjustment and to do this we need to add acid to the mash to combat the alkalinity. Usually this is achieved by adding AMS or lactic acid or acidated malt. Be aware that AMS acid will also add sulfates and chlorides so the choice of which ingredient you want will depend on your target water profile. More on that later. For those of you that find that once you've added your grains to your water, usually you're fairly close to that desired level of 5.2, you may well find that a simple pH lock will actually do the job. This is actually true of the water in my area. So that's actually quite nice if you're there. Now that we have our pH in place, we can now look at changing the rest of our water's chemistry to match a water profile for our chosen style. For example, 
The London water profile is well celebrated for porters and dark owls. The Pilsen water profile is famous for its lager styles, and the Munich water profile is fantastic for dark lagers. An easy way to get these profiles, and also to easily adjust your water to match them, is actually with the use of a water calculator. Brewer's Friend, for example, have one that is totally free to use. You will simply add in the relevant water report information, select the water profile that you wish to adjust to, and it will tell you what you need to add to your water to reach the target profile. Simple stuff. You will find that when it comes to brewing water elements, there are actually five that are key. I will now look at each of these five and give you some information to help you on your way. The first of these is calcium. Even low levels of calcium can cause clarity issues and can have a negative effect on fermentation. The ideal range here is between 50 to 200 ppm. Calcium can be added by using calcium chloride and gypsum, the choice being whether you also want to add sulphate or chlorides depending on the target profile. Next up we have magnesium. This is usually found in low levels in drinking water. Magnesium will affect the alkalinity of your water, but just not to the same degree as calcium will. Magnesium usually provides nutrition for your yeast and will aid healthy fermentation. Too much magnesium though will actually pr produce astringency. And we really don't want that of course. A level of 10 ppm is actually ideal. Magnesium sulphate or Epsom salts can be added to increase magnesium and sulphate levels. Next up we have chloride and sulphates. Both of these actually work together to promote flavours in your beer. Sulfates will bring out hops and bitterness. Chloride will actually bring out the flavour of the malt. For example, for a hoppy beer, 300 ppm sulfate to 100 ppm chloride is a very nice ratio. For a malt forward beer, 100 ppm sulfate to 150 ppm chloride is a popular choice. Note the level of 100 ppm here is a minimum. It really is where you need to be looking to get any result from these. And lastly we have sodium. Go easy here because this is going to create a salty flavour. In lower levels it will actually enhance mouthfeel. Never go higher than 100 ppm here and you will be happy. To enhance your sodium levels, you can just use regular salt. So there you go. You now have all of the information you need to actually experiment with different water profiles and adjust your water to suit the brews that you make. If you would like to look further into this topic, then I would certainly recommend the book that you can see on your screen right now. It goes into everything in great depth if you want, wish to look further into things. I do hope that you have found this easy guide both useful and interesting. I look forward to doing more of these in the future and I hope you have enjoyed the video overall. So if you did like this video then please do go ahead and like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I've got a lot of videos in the pipeline for the future, so if you're interested in uh, seeing what I've got coming up, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I've covered in this video or in others, or anything in to do with brewing in general, then please do not hesitate to get in touch. I'm more than happy to help. Until then, happy brewing!